Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it is so much worse for The Flash than we thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, the media now making excuses for it, including this article from Deadline that blames the strikes. The writer's strike, yes. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about this because, you know, they couldn't do enough press for The Flash, you know, because that Super Bowl ad didn't do, didn't do yeah. enough. Yeah, but it just failed because they couldn't do junkets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're going to talk about this. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! And, you know, here's the thing. I actually was interested in seeing the movie after I saw the trailer with Michael Keaton's Batman. Mm -hmm. And then as I heard more about the movie, I'm like, nah, I think I'm good. No, a lot of people have said it wasn't a bad movie. No, some it's people said it was actually pretty good, but we've had all kinds of damage control being done. Uh, they had the directors out there like, it's supposed to look cheesy. Yeah, people were saying about the, the, the special effects were kind of all over the place. There was some really good, and then there was some not so good. And that, yeah, it was supposed to look like that. I'm like, I don't, I don't think it was. Yeah, so they were they were expecting uh, 70 to 75 million. It's actually open, gonna open below Black Adam. No, what's even worse is they were expecting like, what, 140 some, or yeah. something at originally? That was the original number. And I don't know if they were just putting that number out there to try to get people pumped for this movie. I think they overestimated, uh, you know, how the nostalgia bait would play out. And I think a lot of people are just looking at DC like it's it's a dead continuity anyway. Well, I think I think the know? biggest thing too, yeah, that's what you said. I think that's the biggest thing. People are like, you're rebooting it anyway, so why do we care? And I think Ezra Miller's fiascos had you know something to do with it as well. Yeah. Oh. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, and they're gonna say that well because Ezra wasn't allowed to to promote the movie. How many people actually go see movies? based on celebrities talking about themselves on talk shows. They go It's not just that the junkets. Like, you know, you see most yeah. of what they're used for is for places like Deadline here to take one clip out of an interview about another project they're working on to run with a story. Like, oh so and so says this upcoming project is, you know, their Star Wars movie is this, their next Marvel movie is this. They don't even really talk about what they're saying about the movie too much. They run an article, but the takeaway is usually what they they leak about other projects. No one really watches those interviews. Yeah. So bullshit. Oh, it's because we couldn't do the interviews and the red carpet stuff like we should because of the writer strike. Bullshit. So they were, they were talking. It was uh, supposed to do seventy to seventy-five million. It's down to sixty million now for a three-day. Mm -hmm. That is not good. The studio is still expecting the Juneteenth holiday to deliver and get the film a seventy million dollars over four days at forty-two hundred theaters. It's possible because you know. Another day could technically do $10 million. Oh, they're throwing shade at Juneteenth. You can't do that. They said if that's the case, that's the first time the federal holiday, which has not proven itself to be a big movie-going day, has yielded a daily gross for a movie north of $10 million. I don't think that's... I don't think it's going to I don't think it's going to happen. They but were you actually, never know. Straight to things uh, are <laughs> Um... Yeah, other studios see these figures lower, given the uh, 9.7 million previews last night. Look like The Flash had the potential to over-deliver and be its weekend estimates. But again, this is one of those movies where the diehards are going to go early. They're going to go the midnight show. They're going to go, well, it used to be the midnight show. Now it's like the 4 o'clock in the afternoon show. They're going to go as early as they can. Yeah, he said, should the movie have gone straight to Warner Streaming Max? No, absolutely not. They need to make as much money as they can. Yeah, they do. But they probably should have just stuck it on Max. Yeah, because, I mean, here's here... Here's the issue, though, now. So they canceled Batgirl because they said it was brand damaging. It wouldn't perform that well. That was going to be a Max movie. And that was getting Michael Keaton in it, too, I think. Right? So they canceled that one. They put the Snyder Cut on Max. They could have released that theatrically and probably mm -hmm. made made bang there, I don't too, know. But... It was awfully long for a theatrical yeah, release. I don't know. I don't know. Here's where they talk about the strikes. With SAG after strike authorization in place... And should the talks go sideways and actors not permitted to do press in those situations, the studios, streamers, etc., may want to think twice about playing notorious, notorious hardball, as this is what happens when your cast isn't available to promote a major motion oh, bullshit. picture. Bullshit! Bullshit! This has Ez nothing to do with that! Come Ez on! Ezra Miller was not available to promote the movie because Ezra Miller was not permitted to speak because they were afraid of what Ezra Miller would say. So let me get this straight. So the movie fails and Deadline's excuses, it's because they weren't allowed to, to talk about it because of the strike. And this is why the, the, the studios need to learn their lesson about the writer's strike, because this is what happens when you don't do proper promotion with the writers. Are you serious? 
No one cared. That's the problem. So they're talking about how oh Comic-Con's God. not going to have celebrities there. They're not allowed to go there. Now they're talking about the WGA strike. They said compound woes because most of the, the talk shows are down, right? But again, how many people go see a movie based on a talking head on late night TV? They look at the trailer. The late night TV, I'll give them over the other things they were trying to argue. The late night TV, I'll give them a little bit of that. But even then, like most people don't watch late night TV. I mean, a lot of people do. But the reason, okay, the ratings on late night TVs were TV shows were down a lot, and that's why they were firing people and getting rid of late night TV shows. Yeah. So you no, know, ten years ago, maybe. They said the reason why many didn't sit down with the bulk of press is so they didn't have to be on the, the hook for fielding uncomfortable yeah, questions about the leading star of the film, Ezra Miller. That I believe. And they didn't have a promotional tie-in. They had like a Puma had flash stickers or something. Um, so what, they have Ezra Miller's face on a box of kids' cereal? I think they I think I mean, they yeah, I think they nailed it right there. <laughs> little the marshmallow reason, guns. The and... reason they didn't yeah, I know right. The reason they didn't have uh, they didn't have the, the press like they should have for this was because the other actors didn't want to put in the spot about Miller. Which right. I can't blame him. I wouldn't want to be either. But I don't... Bullshit. It's just, oh, it's the writer's strike. There's something else going on here with The Flash. Uh, billed by James Gunn back in January as probably one of the greatest superhero oh, movies ever made. That doesn't instill confidence for moving forward with DC. No, moviegoers disagree, giving it a B cinema score and 77% on com score. Uh, post-track exits with a 59% recommend. That buzz coupled with the fact that The Flash is a very male-heavy movie and not pulling in as many women as Aquaman or Wonder Woman is slowing it down. So basically, w- women went to Wonder Woman because they love Wonder Woman. They went to Aquaman because they love Jason Momoa, and no one has the hots for Miller. Yeah, so this is just, <laughs> like... this is just really... I mean, this is bad. I mean, I knew it wasn't going to do great, Um I, I thought it would do better than this. I thought it would come under. I thought I was thinking it was going to be 70 to 80. It was going to do better than Black Adam because for no other reason, if for no other reason, Michael Keaton's Batman, but people don't even give a shit. They're like, we well, only no, because they, no, 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 no. They wanted to see Michael Keaton's Batman as a movie. Yes. Had they done that, it would be a different story, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, the, the buzz hasn't been that great. Now, I have, I do know some people have seen the movie and they say it's actually pretty good. But I think everybody is just so over DC at this point because it's like freaking 50 different continuities and, you know, it's a freaking train wreck, right? So this is funny, though. They said, no studio is envying the position that Warners has been in with the Flash. I just think it's funny. They said no one's blaming Warners for tying their shoes together and falling down. Pretty much. I mean, you, there's a lot of reasons why this happened. I think, I think the writer's strike, maybe for late night TV show, maybe. But that would be the least of the reasons for why this happened. Um, this, this, there's so many things wrong here. Like they, people are already mad at Warner because they, they've shelved other projects. They're mad at, you know, a lot of people are mad they're rebooting the DC. Um, EU. So they're like, why bother going to it? I mean, yes, it's a kickoff of the reboot supposedly, but like, they don't care. They just don't care. No, they don't care. Miller's, you know, public meltdown about the proportions and all the legal issues that went along with that play into it. Um, I just think there's so much here. There's a lot of things that they're factored into it. I think mostly people are just tired of superhero movies. And the, the, the why bother is rebooting. They're, they're tired of bad superhero movies. They're tired of constant reboots, moldy verses. Again, I, that might even factor into it too. The whole moldy verse thing. People are tired. I think of the moldy verse. I think it's confusing as hell. And it's a cop out because there are no stakes. Well, your favorite hero gets off or something major, whatever. We'll just go get another version of them. It's just gone the way of the comics. Yeah, where nothing matters. Expect a reboot every couple of years. Don't get invested because in three years they're going to reboot it with a bunch of number ones again and start everything all over again. It, it, it's like there are no stakes, none whatsoever. And this one, I mean, again, you've just opened the door for infinite Earths. You've just opened the door for infinite versions of Batman and Superman, whatever. And it's just like the next movie that comes out is just going to be yet another Superman of how many freaking Supermans out there and mm-hmm. who. Who gives a shit? I mean, that's the thing. Like, I, I like James Gunn movies. I don't have a lot of hope for the, the Superman movie. I mean, I oh, hope... Oh, no, I just don't think he's the right kind of person to do Superman. I hope I'm wrong. I mean, if I were going to if I were gonna pick a writer-director for a Superman movie that felt like Superman, I would actually pick Brad Bird to do it. 
Um, but you know, whatever. I don't, yeah, I don't he's have not the first thought that comes to my my head. You no, know? no, no, not at all. So I don't know. Uh, there it is, guys. Flash tripped, fell, fell on its face. Like tied the shoelaces together. Tied its shoelaces together, and um, I, I'm gonna skip it. I actually was tempted to go see it in the theater, and the more I heard about it, the more I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I can wait. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.